Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the series of shorter and more detailed views on recording. In today's video, I'll be walking you through the essentials of signal flow on the L12, breaking down the functions of the high Z and pad buttons, and providing a detailed look as to how to set the gain knob for optimal signal quality in any recording scenario. So if you're looking to master your audio setup, let's get started. Let's start with the signal flow. On this board, we have eight mic line inputs and two line level stereo inputs. The signal flow for the first eight channels starts with the combo jacks. Each of these channels, one through eight, features a combo XLR TRS jack, allowing connections of either microphones via XLR for recording vocals or acoustic instruments directly, line level sources via TRS for devices like keyboards, drum machines, or external preamps, these combo jacks automatically sense whether the input is low-level XLR or line-level TRS. Next in line is phantom power. When using condenser microphones and some ribbon microphones, you need to turn on the phantom power switch. On this board, you can have the phantom power on channels 1 through 4 or channels 5 to 8 or both. If you're using dynamic microphones that don't require phantom power, you can leave it off. If you have both types of microphone, you can leave the phantom power on as it will not affect the dynamic mics. This is a good feature as it gives you the ability to use both condenser and dynamic mics all at once. Channels one and two on the mixer feature a high Z button for direct connection of high impedance instruments like electric guitars and basses, which are designed for direct amp connection. If you have more than two high impedance instruments, use a DI direct injection box for the other channels without the high C button. Even active instruments with built-in preamps require either the high C button or a DI box for proper signal matching. Also, most effect pedals require either the use of the high C button or a DI box. Now for line level devices like keyboards, the drum machines, and microphone, keep the high Z button off. All channels one through 12 accept line level signals with channels one through eight also accepting microphone inputs. Line level inputs do not need a preamp unlike microphone signals. Channel three through eight on your mixer include a pad button. And what is the pad button? Well, the pad button, when engaged, lowers the input sensitivity of the channel by a fixed amount, usually minus 20 dB or minus 26 dB. On the L12, it's minus 26 dB. This reduction in signal strength occurs before the signal reaches the preamp, helping to manage overly strong audio inputs. And why use the pad button? Well, to prevent overload. If you're dealing with an exceptionally loud audio source, like a very loud instrument, a drum set, or a microphone capturing high decibel sounds, the signal might be too hot, leading to clipping or distortion. The pad button attenuates the signal to keep it within a safe, distortion-free range for the mixer. The availability of the pad button is crucial for achieving optimal sound quality, as it allows you to control signal levels effectively, ensuring that your audio remains clean and free from unwanted distortion or clipping. Everything we've explored up to this point ensures that we capture the best possible signal from our audio sources, be it microphones, guitars, or synthesizers. This initial step is crucial for producing recordings that faithfully represent the original sound. This way, we're setting the stage for effective further processing in the recording chain. Now, the next is essential phase involves optimizing the signal level as it goes to the recorder, utilizing the gain and compressor controls to achieve clarity and balance. Let's first take a look at the function of the gain knob. The gain knob controls the input sensitivity, amplifying the signal from your microphone, instrument, or audio source to an optimal level for recording or mixing. Setting the correct gain ensures that your audio is neither too quiet nor too loud, capturing the nuances of the performance. This board has two tools that can be used to get the best input signals possible. Let's take a look at them. The signal SIG LED indicator is located just below the high Z or pad button 
This LED lights up to indicate the presence of an audio signal. The light turns green when it detects the signal and red if the signal is just too strong, indicating an overload. The goal is to maintain a signal strength where the LED remains green and you avoid getting it into the red. The next tool to get you going is the record level meter. This feature, when activated, allows you to see the incoming signal strength on the fader LEDs. Unlike the fader controls for monitoring levels, this meter shows the signal level at the gain stage. Even with the fader completely lowered, these LEDs will illuminate when a signal is present. For monitoring input gain, these LEDs will appear dimmer compared to when they show the fader's volume settings. It is possible that when you receive your board, the record level meter is set to off. It's important that at least while setting your optimal gain level, that this option be turned on. And here's how you do it. You go to your menu, press menu, move your cursor to record slash play. Press the enter button, move your cursor to rec level meter. Press the enter button, select on, and you're set. Now press menu until you're back at the project screen. Now your LED meters will work when inputting an audio source. So why is it crucial to set the gain properly? By setting the gain correctly, you preserve the integrity of your sound, maintaining a high signal to noise ratio, and avoid the pitfalls of digital clipping. Ensuring your recordings or live mixes are as clear as dynamic as possible. Let's take a look at the details. Signal to noise ratio, SNR, is a measure comparing the level of the desired sound, like music, vocals, or any audio source that you have, to the level of the background noise. A higher SNR means you get a clearer, cleaner audio with less unwanted hiss or hum. If the gain is too low, the main sound doesn't stand out enough against the background noise, making the noise more noticeable and reducing the SNR. If the gain is too high, not only does it amplify the main sound, but it also boosts the background noise. However, setting the gain just right enhances the main sound while keeping the noise in check. When the gain is set too high, the audio signal can exceed what the preamp can handle leading to clipping. Clipping cuts off the peaks of the audio waves, causing distortion. This distortion sounds harsh and can be particularly damaging because digital clipping is often irreversible, which means you permanently lose the quality of your audio. So to get the best possible signal, here are some steps to follow. First, adjust gradually. Start with the gain low and turn it up until you see the meter peak at around minus 12 dB to minus 6 dB on the loud parts, ensuring headroom for sudden volume increases without clipping. Listen for distortion. Use your ears. If you hear distortion, the gain is too high. By setting the gain correctly, you preserve the integrity of your sound, maintain a high signal-to-noise ratio, and avoid the pitfalls of digital clipping, ensuring your recordings or live mixes are as clear and dynamic as possible. So by setting the gain just right, you're ensuring your recordings or live mixes sound as clear and dynamic as they should. No unwanted noise, no clipping, just your sound at its best. And finally, we have one more tool to help reach the best level possible. The compressor on the Zoom L12 can be an effective tool for optimizing the input signal and preventing preamp overload. And here's how you can use it. A compressor reduces the dynamic range of the audio signal, which means it evens out the loud and soft parts. This helps in managing peaks that could otherwise overload the preamp. By lowering the volume of the loudest parts, while leaving the quieter parts relatively untouched, the compressor prevents the signal from reaching levels that will cause clipping. So how do we set the right amount of compression? On the L12, you can adjust the compressor with one knob. Turning it clockwise increases the compression effect. Start with minimal compression and adjust upwards based on the input's dynamics. For recording or live performances, 
Use a compressor to handle sudden volume spikes from vocals or instruments, ensuring consistent levels without manual gain adjustments. For instruments with wide dynamic ranges like drums or acoustic guitar, the compressor can help keep the signal within the optimal recording range. This way, you avoid the loud peaks, helping the quiet parts to be heard better. For preventing a preamp overload, first you set your gain so that the highest peaks are just below where clipping would occur. Then use the compressor to manage those peaks. Keep an eye on the level meters. With compression, you should see fewer peaks hitting you into the red, allowing you to safely increase the overall gain if necessary for a stronger signal without risking distortion. Be careful though, too much compression can lead to an unnatural sound, losing the dynamic expression of the performance. Aim for a natural sound where the dynamics are controlled but not squashed. Be cautious, as compression can also amplify the noise floor if not set correctly, particularly if the input signal is low. By integrating the compressor into your signal chain, you can ensure that your audio remains within the safe operational range of the preamp, maintaining sound quality while protecting your equipment from distortion due to signal overload. The bottom line is keep your compression to a minimum. Only when you really feel you need to bring up the sound of your instrument a little further. It's better to use less than to use more because later on if you move your tracks onto your DAW, there is a lot easier to adjust compression, EQ, and other effects. So remember, less is more. And now to tackle the popular question I've been receiving. How do you manage gain on channels 9-10 and 11-12? These are stereo channels, each with two line level inputs. You can record either two stereo sources or two mono sources. For mono recording, just use the left input on either or both channels. Here's the catch. There is no gain button for these channels. They're designed for stereo devices like keyboards, synthesizers, drum machines, etc. Where the instrument itself usually has a master output to control the signal level sent to the mixer. For example, when I've recorded keyboards or played back stereo tracks from a phone, here's what I do. I send the signal to the board Keep an eye on both the SIG indicator and the record level meter, and then tweak the master output on the source device to dial in the optimal level. After looking through the manuals and searching online, this method seems to be the best for achieving a clean, clear signal. If anyone out there has discovered a better technique, please drop a comment below and share your wisdom. So there you have it folks, the key to getting that crystal clear sound on your L12 board by mastering signal flow, gain, and compression. Remember, this was episode two in our six part series. Next up, we're diving deep into the effects and EQ section. All the juicy details to make your tracks pop. These videos are short, sweet, and to the point, focusing on specific sections of the board. Thanks for hanging out with me today and a huge shout out to all my subscribers. Your support keeps this channel rolling. Keep tweaking, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.